In this video, we look at all important protocols that you should definitely know as a DevOps engineer. These protocols are something that you use every day when working on different DevOps tools. So understanding them and knowing how they actually work is fundamental and very important for all DevOps engineers. In this video, I will cover different types of protocols, including web protocols, authentication protocols, security protocols, protocols used by monitoring tools, protocols used by CI CD tools, Kubernetes and lot more. So make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's go. The first DevOps protocol we have on the list is HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and it is used for communication between web clients and servers. It enables the exchange of data over the internet. HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP which encrypts data using TLS. In DevOps, HTTP and HTTPS are widely used for REST API communication between different services such as interacting with cloud providers, CI CD pipelines and monitoring tools. Load balancers like Nginx use HTTP to route traffic efficiently, whereas Kubernetes ingress controllers also manage HTTP based service communication to expose applications securely. Next DevOps protocol is WebSockets. WebSocket is a real time bi directional communication protocol that allows persistent connection between client and server. Unlike HTTP, which requires multiple requests for continuous updates, WebSockets establish a long lived connection, enabling efficient communication. In DevOps, WebSockets are used in real-time monitoring dashboards like Grafana, where live data is streamed without requiring page refreshes. They are also used in CI-CD tools to provide live updates on pipeline execution. Kubernetes uses WebSockets for log streaming, allowing developers to view real-time logs from running containers. gRPC protocol is something that is used by almost every DevOps tool these days. It is a high-performance communication protocol designed for microservices. gRPC enables remote procedure calls using protocol buffers instead of JSON, making data exchange faster and more efficient. In DevOps, gRPC is used for service-to-service -service communication in microservices architecture, commonly seen in tools like Istio and Envoy. CI-CD tools like Argo CD also use gRPC to execute pipeline tasks quickly. Not just this, monitoring and observability tools such as Open Telemetry also use gRPC to collect and transmit telemetry data efficiently. Now let's learn about security and authentication protocols starting with SSH. SSH is a secure protocol used for remote access and administration of servers. It provides encrypted communication between a client and a server, preventing unauthorized access. In DevOps, SSH is used for securely connecting to cloud servers, managing infrastructure remotely and executing automated deployments using tools like Ansible. Many version control systems, including GitHub and GitLab, allow developers to authenticate and push code securely using SSH keys. Next authentication protocol is OAuth or Open Authorization that allows application to access resources without exposing passwords. OAuth relies on access tokens for secure API interactions. In DevOps, OAuth is commonly used for authentication in CI CD pipelines, where tools like Jenkins and GitHub Actions authenticate against cloud services. It is also used for API access control in cloud environments, ensuring that only authorized users can perform specific actions. You can also see container registries like Docker Hub or ECR using OAuth for secure authentication. Next up is SAML or Security Assertion Markup Language, which is an authentication protocol used for single sign-on, allowing users to access multiple applications with a single set of credentials. In DevOps, SAML is widely used for enterprise authentication across various platforms, including cloud services like AWS IAM, Google Cloud and Microsoft Azure. Talking about security, you should definitely know about ZTNA or Zero Trust Network Access, which is a security model that enforces strict access control based on identity and context, following the principle of never trust, always verify. In DevOps, ZTNA is used to secure access to cloud resources, CI CD pipelines and even Kubernetes cluster. You might already know one of the biggest challenge in cloud environments these days is ensuring secure access to resources without exposing them to unnecessary risk. Traditional VPNs and firewall rules often give too much access, which makes systems easier to hack. And that's where ZTNA or Zero Trust Network Access model works. ZTNA only gives access based on person's identity and situation. Twingate is a great tool that follows ZTNA access. And let me show you how you can set up ZTNA in Kubernetes cluster using Twingate's Kubernetes operator. Twingate is an excellent tool that follows zero trust model and provides access to your applications based on different roles in the company. This is my Twingate account and I have a group of admins created to whom I want to provide access to my Kubernetes cluster. 
we start by creating a remote network so i'm going to click on remote network this is going to be on premise and the name of the network is going to be broad cluster once you create a remote network you have two connectors here previously we used to deploy this connector by adding access token but now twingate has its own kubernetes operator which we can use to provide access also to create resources and lot more so the github repository has all the steps on how you can install kubernetes operator for twingate and start using it the first step is obviously to clone this repository after you clone the repository you need to add the values in the values.yaml this is the values.yaml file inside this file you can make changes in the twingate operator section we need to add the api key we also need to add the network slug here and the remote network name remember to remove the curly brackets you can get the api key from the twingate dashboard go to twingate click on settings go to api and then click on generate token for label i'm going to name this as token and the permission is going to be read write provision and click on generate copy this token paste it here next the network slug is the same name that you have on your twingate account and the remote network name is your remote network name all right after you add the values in values.yaml you are now ready to install kubernetes operator through this helm command it's always good practice to create a separate namespace so i'm going to create a separate namespace for twingate and then run the helm command inside the twingate namespace perfect you can see the twingate operator is now installed and we can also say kubectl get pods in the twingate namespace to see that the operator is now running to test out twingate i have a simple manifest for nginx deployment and nginx service we are going to be deploying this inside twingate namespace and use twingate kubernetes operator to provide access to this all through manifest file so i'm going to save this and apply now you can see a pod for nginx is running and we also have a service here next step is to add a resource inside our twingate dashboard and we can do this using the kubernetes operator so go to the github repository click on getting started here and then scroll down you can find the twingate connector option as well as twingate resource we already have two connectors here that are automatically created when you create a remote network but we are not going to be using this instead we will be using kubernetes manifest to create a connector so i'm going to remove all these connectors here and then use this manifest file to create a connector using the operator itself so let's copy this so this is our twingate connector resource and we are creating this in the namespace twingate additionally if you want to know more about any of these different resources you can click on the api reference and find out the fields which are required so you can see provider is required so we need to add this provider here and the value for provider could be either docker hub or google so i'm going to name it as docker hub okay now let's apply this and you can see the twingate connector is now running which is my connector here and we can also confirm by refreshing this page inside our remote network we should be having a twingate connector ready next step is to add our nginx pod inside the resource here and for that we are going to be using the twingate resource manifest so i'm going to copy this manifest here i will make changes to this manifest so name it nginx okay so we have the twingate resource manifest created let's save it and apply so you can see now twingate resource is created and we can also see it here inside our resources section updated just now so far we have everything ready all we need to do is provide access by using the twingate resource access so i'm going to copy this manifest again in this twingate resource access manifest we need to provide the principal id and the security policy id the security policy id is something that you can get from the twingate dashboard so click on policies and depending on what policy you want to use you need to click on it this is your policy id paste it here and then also change your principal id the principal id is going to be the group to whom you want to provide access so i want to provide access to my admins i'm going to click on admins and then copy this id here okay let's save this apply let's test this out to see if our nginx application is being accessed by everyone or only by our admin so i'm going to copy this alias here in my browser i'm going to paste this and see if it can be accessed by everyone on the internet you can see it's not being accessed by the public internet so i'm going to be using my tablet and connect to my twingate network to confirm that our nginx application is only accessed by admins you can see the resource here which is nginx.local and when i click on this it's asking me to authenticate once i'm authenticated and it is confirmed that i belong to the admins group you can see i'm able to access nginx.local amazing right this is how you can use tools like twingate which follows zero trust model to provide access to your applications based on roles make sure to try out twingate and secure your applications the link is in description Coming back the most important protocol on the internet is DNS protocol DNS stands for domain name system and it translates domain names into IP addresses enabling users and applications to locate services efficiently In DevOps DNS is used in service discovery for Kubernetes allowing internal services to communicate using domain names instead of IP addresses 
Also, cloud platforms like AWS and Google Cloud have their own DNS services for managing domain names and traffic routing. Next is AMQP Messaging Protocol which stands for Advanced Message Queuing Protocol designed for asynchronous communication between distributed applications. In DevOps, AMQP is widely used in message brokers like RabbitMQ for handling event-driven workflows in CI-CD pipelines and microservices architecture. The last two protocols of this video are based on observability, responsible for logging and monitoring of your application. The first is Syslog which stands for System Logging Protocol and it is used for collecting and forwarding logs from system processes, applications and network devices. In DevOps, Syslog is widely used in logging and monitoring tools such as ELK Stack, FluentD and Splunk to aggregate logs for troubleshooting. Also, cloud providers like AWS and GCP use Syslog based solutions for log management. The last protocol of this video is SNMP which stands for Simple Network Management Protocol and it is used for monitoring and managing network devices like servers, switches and routers. In DevOps, SNMP is used in monitoring tools such as Nagio, Zabbix and Prometheus to collect system metrics from servers and network devices. Also, cloud networking solutions rely on SNMP to monitor infrastructure health. So this was our video on how different protocols are used in DevOps. I hope now you have some idea of how different DevOps tools use these protocols and how they actually function. If you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section and also make sure to try out Twingate. The link is in description. Thank you and have a good day.